Okay, welcome to Object-Oriented Programming with Java, part one, uh, exercise walkthrough. Um, in this video, we're going to start with exercise eight, uh, which is the adder exercise. So let's take a look at that over here. Um, adder is create a program that asks the user for two integers and then prints their sum. So now this is very similar to some of the previous exercises where we just added some numbers. But in this case, we're actually going to get those numbers from the user. So we're going to be able to input information into the computer. Um, now, if you're coming from a language like Python, it's very, very simple. Um, Java, of course, takes a little bit more to do. Um, so in Java, what we need to do is we're going to import something called java.util. You can see util is there, dot scanner. Um, it's the Java Util Scanner class. And the Scanner class lets us do yeah, a number of different things. You can see here it's a simple text scanner, etc., etc. Um, it gives you a little bit of explanation about that. Now, if you're not using Repl.it, um, you might not get quite the same information, but it should function exactly the same. Okay, so since we have imported this class, we now need to actually create an instance of it. And so we're going to say scanner. And we're going to call it reader. You don't have to call it reader, but that's what we're going to call it. Um, reader equals new scanner system.in. Okay. If you don't understand all that, that's fine. Don't, don't stress over it at this point. But basically, we're saying that this reader is a scanner object, and it is a new scanner object who gets or that gets its input from the system input. I think that's about what we can get out of that one. So we need to basically ask the user for two numbers. Um, so I'm going to say, so system.out.println. So it says type a number. And don't forget the semicolons. And so I'm going to say int x equals. And what we need to do is go reader.nextline. Now this isn't going to work properly, and I'll, I'll explain why in one moment, but let's watch and see what happens. This is a, a very good lesson for beginners especially, uh, is to trust the compiler. Okay, the compiler here, you can see the red text tells us there's an error. Okay, so in main Java, line 13, so here's line 13, incompatible types, string cannot be converted to int. Okay, so next line actually returns a string, okay, instead of an int. This says int, this returns a string. So we can't do that. Okay, so what we need to do is to convert it. Okay, so we, we're not going to use casting like we did before uh, in an earlier one, or is that going to be in a later one? But what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, integer wrapper, and we're going to say integer dot parse int method. So you can see here, Parse int takes a string. We already said this gives us a string and returns an int. Okay, so again, you may may or may not see that depending on your system setup. So and again, as I mentioned before, ignore these green underlines for now. Uh, it says the value of the local variable is not used because we haven't used it yet, but we're going to, so don't worry. Okay. Um, and now let's run that and just see if we get an error. And we did not, at least at this point. So I'm going to hit stop. Okay, so now I know that's working. So I want to do, I want to get a second number. So I'm just going to copy and paste that uh, because, you know, we know it's working. You know, why, why not? So this one I'm going to call Y and change that to another number. And then we have to, this is an adder, I believe. Yeah. So exercise eight adder. So I'm going to say int because we have two ints. Z equals X plus Y or Z, depending on where you're from in the world. And then I'm just going to print that out. System.out.println, quotation marks, uh, sum of the numbers, 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 and plus Z. Okay, so I'm going to run that and test it, see, make sure it works. So two, and we'll say eight. Some numbers is 10. Easy peasy. Okay, so let's go on to the next one, number nine, which is the divider. As the Beatles said, number nine. So this one's a little bit different. So instead of addition, we are doing division. Okay. And 
you'll say here it says you'll see here it says make sure that three divided by two equals one point five. And so let me show you what that means and why they're asking us to to pay attention to that. Now basically this is the same problem as the last one, so I'm just going to leave this part of the program there. I'm still using a scanner object. I'm still getting an x and y, but in this case we are dividing. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens. And they use three and two, so we'll use that to be consistent. So three, two, and some of the numbers, oops, that should be division. So the division of the numbers is one, which is not what we want, obviously. Um, this is because we're using two integers. Okay, but z, we need a, we need a, a double because we're gonna have an, uh, a decimal number. So why don't we try changing z to a double and see what happens. So I'm gonna run it. And let's do three and two again. Okay, and now we've got a 1.0. So it's an improvement, but it's still not 1.5. Okay, so what happens is it does the division here, and we get that one that we had the last time, then it converts it to a double. Okay, so what we need to do is something called casting. So I'm gonna put a parentheses here, and I'm gonna change this x into a double. That's how you do it in Java, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So now that we have a double, so a double divided by an integer is a double. So this should give us the correct result. Now notice, because it's a double, I have to also make sure this is a double z. I don't want to put that back to int. Okay, so let's test it and take a look. Three and two, and now we finally have the correct answer. Okay, very good. Let's move on to number 10, calculating the circumference of a circle. So the circumference of a circle is calculated using the formula two times pi times radius. Um, so create a program that asks the user for the radius, then calculates the circumference. Uh, it says here, Java already contains the value pi in the math.py variable, which you can use in your calculation. So let's take a look at that. So in this case, again, we're still using the scanner. We're still getting information from the keyboard. So I'm going to delete all this stuff. And in this case, we are typing a radius, I believe. So type the radius. And I'm going to change this from x to radius. It's really, really important to use full variable names. Um, you might be tempted to use r, and you know, it's OK. But it's good to get into the habit of using proper variable names. Trust me, the other programmers will appreciate it. You'll appreciate it too yourself someday. Um, so now, our circumference. Now, we're multiplying by pi. Uh, so that tells us that we could end up with a decimal number. So that means I need a double. So these are things you got to think about. So double, and I'm looking for the circumference. Again, don't be tempted just to use C. Type it out. And equals, and I believe it was 2 times pi, and they said we could use math.pi. Okay, so you see math is one of the classes here in Java, Java language math, and very interesting. And you see pi is a double, so because it's 3.14159, etc., etc. So 2 times pi times the radius. And then we're just going to print that out. So system.out.println. So circumference of the circle Doop. and add circumference. There we go. So let's test it out. So let's say I'll enter on our circle with a radius 10. That'll make the math a little bit easy. So the circumference of the circle is 62. So 2 times 10 is 20 times 3.1. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so that gives us the circumference of a circle. Again, notice we're still getting integers here, and we didn't have to cast this time because we we're multiplying by a, uh, a double already, so that automatically converted it for us. Uh, so as, because there was a double in there, um, it's doing it for us, which is, which is nice, I guess. Okay, moving on. A um, little bit more with some of the math functions that you can do in Java. We're looking at exercise 11, bigger number. 
So create a program that asks the user for two integers and then prints the larger of the two. Tip, when you write math, math followed by a dot, um, here they recommend using NetBeans. It's a very nice IDE, but it's a bit complex. I'm sticking with REPL.IT for now, uh, for beginners, for my students, uh, because I think it's an uh, easier way for them to get, get their feet wet with uh, Java. Um, so there is a tool, there is a method in math that will tell us the largest number. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to here, and it says, and just delete this stuff because we don't need it. Again, we're still using scanner, et cetera, et cetera. So it says type a number. And I'm going to put this back to X because we're not talking about radiuses anymore, or radii. And I need two numbers because we're comparing. And now if you've done programming before, we could use an if statement here, but we're not going to. Um, and call this Y. Now we got two ints, and we want to know the maximum number. So I'm going to say int max equals math dot max. And you can see this first one takes two integers and returns an integer. So we got two integers. So max x comma y. So what that does is it compares the numbers for us and then returns the largest of the two. And now we can print out the results. And we say, oops, I'm on the next page of my notes. The bigger number is max. Okay, I'm going to run that and let's just test it. And this is also a good habit to get into is just testing your code. So 10, let's say 42. So the bigger number is 42. But what you also want to do is type it in the opposite order. 42 first and 10. That'll help you avoid uh, some logic errors that you might not have caught previously. And so we're still getting the same result and that tells us that everything is working just fine. Okay, and this last one uh, in this section is exercise 12, uh, at least that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna skip this one and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so some of the ages, create a program that asks for the names and ages of two users, and after that prints the sum of their ages. So type your name, type your age, type your name, type your age, and then print that out. Okay, so. I'm going to delete all this stuff. I'm not going to delete it all. So type your name. Now what's interesting here is that we don't need to. How can I put it? Uh, we don't need to convert. So I'm going to say name equals uh, reader dot. Uh, what was it? Um, dot next line. Okay. So name should be a string because it's a string for obvious reasons. And then system system dot out dot print ln. Type your h. Now this one's going to be an integer, so we do have to convert it. So int age equals. Um, integer dot parse int reader dot next line be careful there with the number of parentheses so we got two parentheses here at the end of next line and we got parentheses surrounding the whole thing that's something that people often make mistakes with okay so now what I can do here is copy that because it's basically the same uh, and then one thing that beginners uh, a mistake that I see often with beginners um, is that they re don't realize that there's two names. So they give this name and this name as well. So the way to fix that is, well, one way to fix it is we can call this name one and age one, name two and age two, because they're different. Okay. And then we can say, uh, we can make a new value and call it an integer sum of ages. Again, note the camel casing equals age one plus age two semicolon, and then our print line, our print uh, statement. Pull that up there a little bit. System.out.println, quote, oops, actually name one is the first name, plus, and quote, plus, and name 
2 plus, this is good practice, r plus, oops, I want that plus in there, sum of, sum of ages plus, quote, space, years old. And again, when you're checking your output, make sure you didn't accidentally not put a space there. Let's run this and I'll show you what that looks like. And we'll say Al, and I'll say Al is, I don't know, 45, and Peg is 40. So Al and Peg are 85 years old. So notice there's no space here, because I forgot the space inside the quotation marks. These spaces here do not get printed onto the screen. So let me run that. And again, anytime you make a change, no matter how simple it is, test it, because you never know. So Al, 45, Peg, oops. Peg is 40, and there we go. Okay, I'm gonna stop this video here and then continue on in the next video. Um, just real quick, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm not gonna do exercise 13 uh, because it says a ready-made component NHL statistics is included along with the exercise files. Since I'm using REPL.IT and not a full-fledged development environment, I don't have access to that, uh, the, that file for my purposes. So we'll just skip that one. And if you want to try it, you know, later when you get learn more about this or, uh, you know, feel free to go ahead. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.